All right, Star Wars fans, going to watch an interesting film that you've probably never heard of before. It's called Sideshow with Lance Kerman and Red Buttons. Let's watch. There's Lance Kerwin, it's Nick. Watching a circus act, and that's Connie Stevens. That's Mr. Scholl, he runs the circus. Yes, sir. Nick wants to become a puppeteer. You're, uh, Alas. Alas. Alas, yes, sir. It was supposed to be his. I'm sorry, Mr. Scholl. The bus broke down outside of Brownsville. There he is. Here's Harry. That's Red Here's Buttons. Palace, uh, the puppet man. I get him under the plane and show him around, you know. Nick's first friend at the circus. Hiya, Lefty. <laughs> I'm Harry Hubble. Nick Palace. Selma. That's the actor Jerry Marin on the right, one of the original Lollipop Guild members from The Wizard of Oz. Uh, anything we can do, give a holler. Thank you. Harry? Any word on Lubbock? Still on a schedule. Next month. And there's Connie Seasons. She plays Graciela. She says she's from Hungary. Smelling of his animals. And you, you, with your kind of perfume, you smell worse than they do. That's Anthony Franciosa, Zeranoff, the lion tamer. Peace, let that be peace, huh? So before Nick does his act for the public, he has to practice in front of the other, uh, members of the circus. Notice Sandy Allen in the back, world's tallest woman. Mr. Scholl is kind we of an have ass. A rules in this circus. You are sideshow. You don't associate with them, the roustabouts, and never with a nigger. And you have nothing to do with Big Top. Just do your job. Hubble. Maybe jobs. She says she's, she's from Hungary, but she's really from she Brooklyn. That was a crummy bum. Uh, uh, uh. Well, I have never even been to Brooklyn. <laughs> You just shut up sometimes, huh, Jack? <laughs> that big boy, you must not listen to him. Because, like all of his kind, he is jealous. <laughs> yes, he is jealous. Harry's wife and daughter have been missing for years. My kid loved them. I wish we'd bring them. They had the fire. Three years ago. I have a fondant. Just didn't get up one morning. Sandy Allen? We never did talk much. She plays Goliath. I used to say, hey, Ava went under your lip. But you never got the joke. Well, I'll see you. So long. Now we're going to meet the man with no face. This is Paula, the tattooed lady. For instance? Looks like she might be trying geography. to tease Nick a little bit here. Now, this is the Taj Mahal, built by an Indian Maharaja to honor the woman he would love forever. Oh, why does that do he doesn't like some of his rules. Why do you treat them that way? You're a fool. How many times do I have to tell you? Keep away from them. No! I pick my own friends! Yeah. He won't show up. They're sad because I their son might not show up to see He's them. He's a civilian. Would you want anyone to know your folks, son? 
Come on. Come on. Okay, the sun is normal size. Zaranoff gets angry at Mr. Scholl and throws him in the lion cage. But Nick called uh, their son and said, hey, show up. You remind me of the elephant who married a mouse. Uh, that's it, folks. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time around. Hey, Helen. This way. Nick has a crush on Graciela. Of course not. <laughs> I forgot. You are so young. <laughs> How old are you anyway? <laughs> Where's youngest Papa dear? Sixteen. Sixteen? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> I love it. There's a 22 year age difference between the two in real life. But that's not stopping this scene from happening. They're all traveling on a train now, and he goes to see Harry. himself. Uh, after 10 o'clock in the morning, I'll have a mortuary to pick him up and dispose of the remains. What do you mean, dispose of the remains? You do what I tell you, that's all you do, what I tell you. So many of these people were close to Harry. Maybe they'd like to have a little service. Oh, that would be nice. The circus comes to town to have a funeral. Oh, that good publicity. Maybe in the main ring, that would be a show. Well, he's in love now, but... He does realize that she has other suitors, too. You are so sweet. Uh, may I come in? Maybe not tonight. Um, Nikki, uh... Shoal doesn't like this guy, Gage. He basically told him if you ever drink again, you're fired. He drank tonight. But Shoal's going to do more than just uh, fire him. Come get me. Here I am. Easy for you. A cripple. Come get me. Come get me. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Those two guys run. They're scared shitless now. Don't. Don't say nothing. Understand? Nothing. Joel knows there was two people, but he's not sure who yet that saw him do it. Stare down. He decides to tell Zaranoff. And Mr. Shaw, he was there. He was picking on fire and teasing. I think he'd been drinking too. Anyway, they, they started to fight, and Byron grabbed the king. It was a dagger. And Shoal stabbed him. He killed him and dumped him on a moving train. That night when Zaranoff is in the ring, Shoal has done something to screw it up. Which leads to an attack. Zaranoff ultimately gets 
still. Soul eventually confronts Nick. I saw two of you. Who was with you? Nobody. I was alone. I saw two of you. No, Mr. Soul. I, I was there, but I was alone, and I wouldn't tell. Alas, save your own life. The guy with no face shows up. But the show does go on. The show told me. New guess... manager? Yes. What's he like? Don't worry about him. <laughs> because he's an old friend of mine. <laughs> and you, old friend, when are you going to come and see me? Huh? Well, I tell you, Garcia, I'd love to. When I can. Let's talk about this movie, Sideshow. This is a movie that's actually made for television. It came out in the summer of 1981. I have no memory of it. Never saw it back then. Um, it's actually put out, believe it or not, by Sid and Marty Croft. Uh, those two who gave us all those wonderful shows in the 70s. Dr. Shrinker, H.R. Uh, Puff and Stuff, Electro Woman and Dyna Girl, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. They put this thing out. Now, this is it's an odd little film because, like I said, it's made for television. It has a pretty good cast, actually. Connie Stevens, Lance Kerwin, uh, Red Buttons, Anthony Franciosa. Did you notice Jerry Marin, who was uh, one of the tiny people there? He actually uh, is a member of the Lollipop Guild from the original Wizard of Oz. He's actually the only surviving munchkin as of as of today. He's 98 years old, I believe. He's still going. So, anyway... Um, it's, I don't know how to describe this movie. It's, it, it, until we got to the end of the movie there where there was an actual murder that took place, uh, there really wasn't much of a plot. It's just kind of a day in the life or a few days in the life of, of, of circus people. I'm not sure when this movie was actually taking place either because, um, <sighs> You don't really see circuses like this anymore. There were trains in this movie, but I couldn't actually detect anything that would make me believe it was, could have been happening in modern times or in the 1930s, for all I know. I don't know. I just don't know when this was taking place. I don't know. There was nothing really to indicate what year this was happening. So, But again, nothing was ha much happening in this movie until the end when uh, Shoal, uh, the guy uh, stabs uh, the other guy, Gage, kills him, and then he throws him on a moving train. And uh, so we get a little intrigue and excitement there. But other than that, not much happened in this movie in terms of um, plots. Um, like I said, it's kind of like that Cheech and Chong's next movie. Just a few days in the life of Cheech and Chong. That's what you got here. A few days in the life of, of, of Nicky, who is uh, um, Lance Kerwin, uh, as he becomes a puppeteer in a carnival. Um, incidentally, this movie was filmed in 1978, but not shown until 1981. I uh, might recognize Kerwin as... Um, the guy in Salem's Lot, which he made about a year after this one was. So, anyway, um, yeah, the film itself, though, is actually not bad. For a movie that doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of plot in it, it was very, fairly interesting. Uh, you may have seen Sandy Allen. She is the uh, was the world's tallest woman. She died, I think, maybe in the last five, ten years or so. She was in this movie. She's playing uh, Goliatha, I think that's what they called her. And, um, yeah, an odd little film. So, anyway... This film is a movie that I rented on a beta tape uh, back in the 80s. I got it from a, a, a grocery store called Red Owl in Two Rivers, Wisconsin. Copied it, never watched it, saw it in, in the 90s sometimes when I retaped it. Saw it in 2012 and I reviewed it for the first time. Now I'm reviewing it again and uh, don't know if I'll ever watch it again, but it actually wasn't a bad film. It's not available on DVD. This is a DVD-R. I copied it from the... Uh, pre-recorded VHS, which I do own. The box art looks just like that. Uh, and so there you go. Anyway, let me know if you've seen this little relic. It's kind of a hard hard to find thing. It's um, You can still get this on VHS, on Amazon, eBay, but it might cost you about 50, 60 bucks or so. For some reason, it's kind of sought after. I don't know why, and it is rare. Um, I have the only critic review on IMDb for this movie too so not a whole lot of information out there about this either so anyway check it out let me know what you think about it leave some comments down below we'll talk about it it's an interesting film it's called Sideshow watch it bye